what will happen on, of the take of the fat. But normally I say we need probably a touch up, and a small touch up can be done, as you know, in local anesthetics. Today we're working with a new uh, device at Academy Clinique, and uh, it's not on the market yet. But with this kind of device, uh, we can harvest pieces or segments of fat. And uh, as you see here, this is a segment put in the lower lip. As you can see, the, the half of the lower lip is, is placed with a, a transplant. Um, and the good thing about this is that you get a, a segment, not in small pieces. And also ideal, I think, when you're dealing with tougher tissues and you really want to place the segment in a particular area. This is just a mirror image showing uh, the result before and after a transplant with this technique in the lower lip. So, this is the volume in question of fat in two ways, or of course hyaluronic acid fillers. When it comes to the corner of the lift, I mentioned that neurotoxin has definitely a place. By blocking the depressor muscles and adding fillers uh, under the corner of the lip or in the corner of the lip, we can restore and or improve the angle and, and the shape of the corner of the lip. If we want to go for a more aggressive approach, we need to go for surgery. And the surgical um, technique is to excise a piece of a skin in the lateral portion. And we need normally, at least if we want to be more aggressive, to um, extend the incision uh, one, at least one centimeter lateral of the natural uh, fold of the, of the nasal labial fold on the marionette lines which unfortunately causes a scar, and that's something we have to address. In minor cases, we don't need it, because we can do a, a, a scar that follows the upper lip and is rounded and follows the lower lip, and we can do undermining and excision of the skin, and then, of course, the scar will only follow uh, the lip border, and that's possible in smaller cases. Um, the positive thing is that we're changing the angle, the, 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 the negative angle, to a, a neutral or positive uh, angle. Also, it's a possibility to do a functional uh, treatment in patients with drooling problems and also in balanced patients with facial palsy, for example. This older man suffered from a problem with drooling from both his sides. And this is the result afterwards. But as you can see, you see the scar here and the scar here. But in a case like this, he could live with the scar because he was very much improved when it comes to the functional part of it. And, and it definitely improved his life because it was a social problem for him. But as I said, visible scar is a complication. And also, there is a delicate area. So if you get some tension in this area, it could be a, a problem and an irritation for the patient. And of course, it's in a reversible result when you go through this kind of procedures. This is just an example of a woman. You see the negative angle here, a little different on that side. The result afterwards, you can see the scar, but you can see the change of a positive angle. This is the other side, and you can see the scar here. Uh, this is the lateral view. And again, the negative part is, of course, the scar. When it comes to the upper lip, there are two possibilities to do elongation and rotation. And the best thing is to do a VY-plasty. And the nice thing about the VY-plasty in the mucosa is that you have a lot of options. You can place this uh, zigzag pattern in many ways. And if you, the pointed areas are, are located in the areas you want to get the most effect and smoothen up the lip. Very often you have a lip with an with a irregularity. Typical shape uh, is an irregularity. And when you put these arrows in, that, uh, in these areas, you get an effect. And together with fat transplantation, you get a nice effect. This is a typical case. As you see, this is a depression here and on that side. So I place uh, the, the, uh, the arrows like this on both sides and, and, and uh, upward in, in the middle. <clears throat> together with fat transplantation, you get a smooth surface and a volume in, in increase. If I only inject fat or put a segment of fat, we get the duct-like appearance in many of these patients, which is not pleasing. So I prefer to do it in the upper lip. And then lower lip, it's not, it's not necessary to do VY plastic because of 
uh, gravity and elevation, it rotates naturally uh, in, a, in a positive way. So, what can happen? Well, there can, could be, if you're too aggressive, some loss of sensation, of course, initially, and there can be some stiffness of the upper lip in the scars. Uh, and some patients that I met initially also said it was hard to pronounce words because it felt strange. That, that softens over time, but that's something you really have to address when you do this. This is a very young woman, as you can see, and she was concerned about showing her the rabbit-like appearance with the teeth. And this is a combination of a weaviplasty with the elongation of the upper lip together with the fat transplantation. And she was very uh, happy with this kind of result. I think it's also very important to address a dentist when it comes to the problem like this. Maybe it's not surgery, it's, it's the, the, the key. You discuss the shape of the maxilla and the shape of the teeth. Maybe it should be addressed in another way. As you see, this patient benefited definitely from the improvement of the teeth, and she had a very small elongation of the upper lip, and she was happy with that. And I think that's something we should have in mind when we're talking about the lip length. This is shortening of the upper lip. And we know over time, as we, I said initially, that we start to see the upper teeth, but over time it's getting longer and we see the lower teeth instead. And that's not systemically pleasing. But the problem with this is that we have to do an excision, and some call it buffalo horn excision, but we have to take care of, but we're really concerned about where to put place the incision. You can go into the nostrils to avoid a natural scarring. Uh, and, but I think sometimes to, uh, the results are very pleasing in, with a shorter upper lip. But at the end, you have to address the scar problem with the patients. This together with some extra volume is very often beneficial in slightly younger people, uh, older people, sorry. So when I combine different techniques, like in, in this, is this girl. I mean, she has a nice appearance, but she didn't like the long lip. I did a shortening, I did a fat transplantation, uh, injected some fillers in, in, in the um, in lip contour, and this together gave this result. Of course, and when it comes to filler, we have to do a follow-up maybe twice a year to inject some more hyaluronic acid if she wants to, but uh, we can get the more dra dramatic effect with the surgery. This is another example with a combination of weviplasty, fat transplantation, and upper lip shortening. Well, sometimes it could be a little bit too much of a good thing, but it depends also on, on the expectations of the patients. Uh, it's a big variation is in what we think is aesthetically pleasing. This patient has a lot of volume uh, and a shortening on the upper lip. Still, she has a little extra tattoo to even make the lip look bigger. This is of course maybe not my favorite when it comes to aesthetics, but I said this is a big variation and we have to, <coughs> to deal with what the patient wants and what we think is realistic. Another combination is uh, with upper lip fat transplantation, filler on the contour, neurotoxin block when it comes to, to uh, lines and wrinkles. And the nice thing about four injections with neurotoxins, or five, is that you get the natural rotation of the upper lip. Of course, you should have a very high, if, if the dose is too high, you know all the problems with drinking and, and <coughs> avoid red wine the first couple of weeks, because it could be a leakage. But if you work out a certain pattern of treatment, I think this could be um, very easy treated to maintain this good result with, with neurotoxin block. The rest is a permanent um, uh, solution to a problem. Another thing that I'm not so very happy about is to do an excision uh, in the lateral part of the upper lip. This patient, uh, she's actually not mine, but never mind, she did an excision of the lateral part here. Even though we do a, a weviplasty in the lateral part, it's sometimes hard to really get the rotation. And then the only thing is to do a skin excision if the patient really wants to make the, the lip bigger. But this is a scar 
uh, can be uh, a lot of problem with. I'm going to show you a case later. So uh, I try to avoid it. I really try. I try to work with, with uh, uh, rotation, VY plasty, lateral. I put in uh, new fat or, or fillers and I even try to manipulate it a little bit with, with um, uh, neurotoxins above the, the border to get the rotation. So this is really the last uh, solution to this problem. The good thing about that is, of course, that you can correct smaller symmetries. Like this lady, we were placed the uh, smaller symmetry, as you can see here. She got the segment of fat in this area together later on uh, to improve this contour. But as you see, she has a small difference in shape here. So I added an excision in this lateral part to get an even better balance. So you can do small tricks with, with surgery here and there as long as the patient understands what the outcome will be when it comes to scars. Fat transplantation is also, I think, great when it comes to combination of facial pulse, uh, facial pulse patient or patient with injuries or malformations. This is young patients treated with a combination of a rotation flap and fat transplantation. And we can achieve a good and normalized lab li uh, lip contour. This is a patient we quite often see. Some are born with this depressor um, difference. You see the, the left one is, as you see, not working. And some are required uh, or, or, during, or, or caused by diseases. Or, uh, and this patient, as you see, have a problem. And I think neurotoxin works wonderfully when you just block the depression, you can get a good balance. And again, in patients with this kind of problems, the combination of surgery and non-going treatment with blockings can get a much better balance in these kind of patients. So again, we have so many tools today to play with that can balance the lips, which is sometimes quite com complicated. And when it comes to the fillers, we can do small magic tricks. We can in improve the contour, the pressure around the the chin by filling it out. We can add some restylane and lip and lip contour. And this is immediately after intradermal injection with skin versus that will improve this area. So we can do small things that really can make a big difference long term. We don't always need to, to go for the knife. As you know, this is a delicate area and the lips are not good for kissing and eating and so on. In this situation, this was a professional flute. Uh, player and uh, he got the problem with the small injury as you can see here and he couldn't play his flute and he came to me what can you do and I was thinking uh, could I go in and excise this or what should I do I started just to inject uh, 0.1 cc of our steroids and this hard scar softened and he came back to me and was very happy the problem was solved so uh, sometimes we can look for a very easy solution it happens that patients come up to us and they have a lot of expectations. Uh, like this young uh, girl came to me and I know, and she even showed uh, this photo, Angelina Jolie, and she said, I want to look like that. I said, uh, I don't think you should try to look like somebody. Okay, we, we can uh, try to improve some of your areas and so you get a little bit of that kind of look. And uh, well, the permanent thing is, is a rhinoplasty. It is a rotation of the upper lip and it's a small chin implant, but the rest is fillers in her face. And I think again that that's very good in a young patient like this. Yeah, it's a lot of filler. It's a lot of filler in the cheek and like the uh, malar bones are filled out with quite a lot of volume, even the chin. And, and, and the tear trough is filled out. Okay, okay she, she looks a little bit more like that. But the good thing is if she one day says, well, I don't want to, to, to go on and look like this, uh, she'll come back more or less to disappearance except from the tip of the nose. And well, the, both lips will go down, but I think she'll have a more balanced approach. Again, I think fillers and neurotoxin is a good start in, the, in, in, the, in this kind of patients. How about problems with this, with surgery? Well, I mentioned when it comes to surgery, the scar problem, um, 
which can be uh, uh, problems, but when it comes to severe problems, it is when we see patients quite often coming from other countries, especially Eastern countries, they have got injections in the lips of unknown materials. If it's hyaluronic acid, fine, we can inject hyaluronidase and we can get rid of the problem. But we, they don't know what they got into the lips and it sometimes happens they don't know what they have in the breast. So, uh, I try to get something out of this with, with a perforation of a uh, quite thick needle and I got some out. But this is really t tough problems, I think, to deal with. Uh, when it comes to permanent fillers, we know about the granuloma problems. I myself have had cases a long time ago when we started with article and I was uh, <coughs> exposed in the media with one of my patients. Actually, that's her. She developed a very severe granuloma formation with article. Uh, and uh, we've been uh, going on with treatments and I'm still treating her actually. Um, so, and my advice, and that's always what I say when talking about lips, never ever use permanent fillers in the lips. If you, okay, if you fill out some area in the, in the nose, in the bony area, fine. That's something you can live with, but not in a soft, delicate area that has to move. This is not easy to, to get rid of, and it's not nice to excise, it's not nice to inject cortisone. Actually, she, she's crippled for life. Another thing that we have seen, unfortunately, is uh, laser treatment in the period uh, world area uh, when we have used too strong um, treatments that really cause scar tissue. And uh, of course, we can improve this, but you will never be normalized. Well, even hyaluronic acid uh, can cause problems. This is a used to be a patient of mine, and uh, I've been treating her several times. She called me and said I went to a place and I injected uh, hyaluronic acid again. Uh, but now it feels strange, can you have a look at me? Oh, sure. And she came to me and I realized immediately that she had a severe infection, of course, and I took a syringe in and, and uh, she got two milliliters of pus out and put her antibiotics, fortunately. Well, it all went fine in the end, but I mean, we have always the risk of infection. Uh, so that's something we should be aware of, even when we talking about hyaluronic acid. Well, uh, sometimes we have a more complicated case. This was in 2008. Uh, this girl had a couple of problems. She had a defect after trauma. She had this very, very thin lip laterally, and she wanted to improve that. And we did some, tried to improve it with surgery. And I was tempted at that time, maybe we should go back. And she, she came back to me with a scar. I said, I'm not so sure. She came back to me, she had this scar. And she wasn't happy with the result because she had not more volume. But she only had the scar here. And this defect wasn't much improved, maybe a little bit before. So I started to treat her in 2008, yeah, later. And you see, um, what I did was a weaviplasty. I did fat transplantation, and I re-excised the area down to the to the upper lips, the red part. And this is uh, in, on the table. And uh, well, she was definitely improved. You can see initially the swelling and so on, and bruised. But she was ha a little bit happy, but not not really happy. We were not really friends. Because the scores, she said, I don't want them. I said, I can't do anything but try to improve them. And this is, she had the children in between, and this was the last time I operated in 2012. And now I saw her, and this is five years later, 2013. Now we're friends, she's happy because she thinks she has a nicer contour uh, or volume. The contour uh, actually we injected. Uh, hyaluronic acid to improve it because you see it's, it's a little <coughs> bit poor uh, that's all we did and a little bit hyaluronic acid here but the overall she's happy with the, with the new volume she's got and the shape and if shit happens uh, it's of course important to try to stick to the patient normally you get one maybe two chances but uh, after that they try to find somebody better than you or me 
Um, but she held, held on to me and she's happy. But you know, it took five years. So my advice is when we do this, start with, if you can do the small things, maybe fat, maybe ironic acid, maybe blocking, and see if the patient is happy. If she's happy, we can go to the next step, and that's surgery. But surgery is permanent, and avoid visible scars as much as you can. Uh, so otherwise, you'll end up with this kind of problems. Okay, thank you very much.